after 10 plus years of waiting, Avatar 2 The Way of Water has finally streamed into theatres and sunken into our hearts and minds. I know we're a little bit late to talk about this now, but Avatar took 10 years, so I don't think a month is going to be a big deal. Due to the popular success of its predecessor film, Avatar. Avatar, just, just call it Avatar. An enormous audience, including us, has been anticipating its sequel. With fingers biting and seats squirming, we're just waiting until the showing date would arrive. And that day was December 15th. 2022. Going off the trailer, we already knew that one or two things were going to be different in this movie. I mean, come on, this one was set underwater while the other one was set in a forest. That was the most obvious one. The first major difference in the movie. Family. The Tyr and Jake, how cute it is that they build a loving family together consisting of two boys and two girls. Although surprisingly, one of the girls, the middle child, she's actually the biological daughter of Grace's avatar. Interesting enough, we don't know who the father is, but there might be one or two theories which we'll get back to later. Hmm. This leads into us meeting the antagonist of the movie. Again. Again. So it turns out that the Colonel, whom we saw died in the first movie, Colonel Miles I forgot his name. It was Colonel Miles something. Anyway. <laughs> Colonel something. So he returns in a Navi body, which is not technically his, but his memories are put in that body, if you know what I'm saying. And so he comes back as the antagonist. But we also have this lieutenant, this female lieutenant who comes in. Although we don't see much of her, but I think she might be a bigger part to play in the future movies. Who knows? Plus, we just instantly didn't like her character, which shows something. But back on the Colonel, we actually liked his character a lot more in this movie than the previous. And I guess that was because he's not technically him. him. It, they even said it in the movie. Maybe the DNA of the Na'vi made him have a bit more compassion. Actually, I did see a theory of that somewhere that like Na'vi's are a bit more empathetic. Is that the word? Empathetic? Em empathetic. And you could see that already because he had more feelings. You could see that when he saw his previous video of himself, he, he was, was like... He was so humbled by mm. it. Well, not so humbled, but he was humbled enough to be like, <laughs> this was me. And he had fears. He had just, he had so much more character in this one. He seemed more human. Mm. And another mind blowing thing that happened in this movie is that Spider, he's one of the children that the Sully's sort of brought into their family because he always hung around. He turns out to be the Colonel's son. That was something they definitely kept out of the trailers. Yeah, and it's not like you could see any resemblance between them. And another crazy question was like, who was who the mother? She must have been somewhere still on Pandora or mm. gone back with the other humans. So. I don't know. I mean, I looked up and apparently she died in the battle to, of the Tree of Souls. Apparently she died in that, so I heard. I don't know if that's 100% true. Anyway, that was like a sort of thing that happened, but it was really interesting as well. And Spider, he sort of reminds me of a Pandora Tarzan. Yeah, with like the long dreadlock hair yeah. and the loincloth. Anyway, the majority of the movie, they now live in the Water Tribes after the Sullys had to flee from their tribes because they were almost killed when the humans attacked them. Which I still don't quite understand the thought process. I mean, why would you risk putting another tribe in danger? Just a tribe mm. that's not had very much contact with the humans when he could have probably just gone off the map. I mean, like if no one knew where they were, then they wouldn't be attacking them. I think it would have made more sense if they were just gonna go rogue off the map and then they had like a uh, stopover or something happened where one of them were injured. And they have to wait to that and stuff like mm. that. That would have made more sense. Yeah, and then they got like caught up in the whole thing as well. So it wouldn't have been anyone's fault. Either the way back onto the, I don't know what tribe it is, but the water tribe. It's absolutely beautiful and breathtaking and so worth the wait that they said they were going to do to make all the water effects happen. It was amazing. Like the We people, saw this in the IMAX and to see it all oh, like around you. Surrounded. It felt like you were there and that's not even just saying that. It actually felt like you were in the water. And we loved how we had the tribe people and that they were kind of different. They had like sort of fin like hands and fin like tails. And we had the Tolkien whales. I think they're called Tolkien whales. But they were like so precious how they had a connection with them like they do with the dragons and the other tribe. Speaking of which, when Lower, when he made the connection to that rogue Tolkien whale, I had like a bit of a how to train dragon vibe, you know, like going off to the, the dangerous one and had a connection that brought them all together. And, and he had an injury. And I know, knee. like injured wing, like I was like, I was actually waiting for Lower to lose a leg and I'll be like, ah. I know where they got this from. And speaking of Loak and all these other characters, it was just amazing how many fresh new people were introduced into the film and they were all so lovable. Yeah, and they shared the screen time quite equally with them. Like we got to understand Kiri's story and Spider, the tail, yeah, sort of. and even enough of the Tyrion Jake that mm. we didn't feel like we were missing out on them. I also really enjoyed though right, how well they did the effects to make the kids look like the parents. Like Natayam looked pretty much like his mum. He had his 
his mum's features and Loic had more of his dad's features. I think her name was Toc. I couldn't really see much from either parent. But then one. again, she's probably still too young. Yeah. Like, she was a character I think we're gonna have to build on more in future films. But and okay. Kiri, she definitely looks like Grace. Oh, but she's just like, yeah, that's just her mum. I thought it was amazing how they made Kiri look so young and Sukorni with as like, what, like, I think she's 70s. in her 70s. She did it so well. It's amazing what they can do with technology I know, top now. notch to these animators, honestly. Since the movie sort of started off in Jake's point of view, sort of like the first movie where he narrates and all that, we do notice that when it hits the Water Tribe, the whole point of view kind of switches to Loak. Yeah. And I've even heard, now I don't know if this is 100% true, but in the future movies, it's pretty much going to turn to Loak's point of view. Like, he's going to narrate and he's sort of going to be center of attention. And Jake's, he's kind of finished his story and it's ready now for the next generation to take over. But before I move on to the next part, I just want to say one thing about Loak. I honestly thought his name was Noah for halfway yeah. through the movie. And now we're going to go into our thoughts and theories for the next couple of movies. Mm, there were definitely a lot of cliffhangers in this movie that will hopefully resonate over to the next one. One of the first ones would be Loak, whatever his name is. Noah. He had <laughs> Noah. Yeah. He had a relationship sort of building up with one of the water tribe girls. I think she was actually the chief's daughter. We could definitely see a connection happening here. So I think I think we all know where that's going to head in the next movie. And also the father-son relationship between Miles and the Colonel. Because at the end of the movie, the Colonel was like, hey, Spider, come join me. We can defeat these guys together. And he's like, nah. Well, actually, he's more like, <laughs> we don't know if maybe the Colonel will come back and plot his revenge or maybe he's kind of tired of that and he's like, now I have more reason to join the good side. Because I really think they started setting up that he's thinking that he's fighting someone else's war. Mm. It's not his anymore. Mm. And now that he's got technically a son, he's got more reason to join the good side. Now, since Kiri's backstory is bizarrely strange, we can't help but feel that this will be a major overarching story ready for the last film, which is obviously called The Quest for Awa. And the fact that Grace was with Awa and her avatar was with Awa just moments before she died, it wouldn't surprise us that Awa is technically Kiri's mother. Especially that explains all the reasons why Kiri can like do all these different things and she can sort of converse with nature. It's almost like Awa came in the flesh through Grace's avatar. So I think there's a very big setup for the end movie there. Also, has anyone noticed that the Avatar movies are getting very close to Avatar The Last Airbender? In the first movie, there weren't many similarities other than the title, but then we had the Water Tribe. Like... Avatar. And now we hear there's going to be a potentially tense fire nation in the next movie. Like Avatar. And how Kiri tends to have all these weird abnormal connections with all the elementals. Like Avatar. Oh, and how she goes into a trance-like state. Like Avatar. And the movie is called Avatar. Avatar. And the Colonel is only just starting now to remind me a bit of Zuko, you know? Yeah. He's just got the scar here on his head. He doesn't know, like, whether to go to the good side or the bad side. But anyway, their storylines are completely different and they're both awesome in their own way, so we're not complaining. Either way, after all these years, Avatar 2 was definitely and truly worth the wait. They did not disappoint with an awesome sequel. Although there were definitely a few things we didn't expect, we are so hyped and ready for the next films to come. So let us know down in the comments bar below, what were some of your favorite parts of Avatar 2 Way of Water? And what are some of your theories in the next couple of movies? Let us know down in the comments, but until then, we'll see you in our next video. Bye. Bye.